So, Jim, how do we describe our guest today? I'll let you do this. Oh, well, putting me on the spot, um, our guest today is the one and only Wing Commander Nash, who is racking up a fantastic win-loss record in True Grit at the moment, which is where <laughs> I first heard about Actually, his reputation precedes him, so I went to my first True Grit show uh, with a friend, and you were literally the only thing she could talk about. And I got filled in on like the entire backstory of all the feuds you'd been in and everything. So, <laughs> uh, so I was really excited to see this legendary wing commander Nash. And when we got there, it didn't disappoint. So I think you say when you got there, I weren't on the show. <laughs> <laughs> How's that for an intro? That's yeah. I didn't realise I was so uh, credit worthy. Uh, I must be doing something right for people to want to inform you on my my habits and activities and skills and how I should be like signed on every major company going just purely off the true grit alone run itself. <laughs> of course. So of course we're talking to Wing Commander Nash. We've got loads of stuff to talk about. So but first, intern, roll the intro. <laughs> Now, you said before we came on the air, you've been in your little man cave since half past seven this morning. Just tell everybody about that. I have. Uh, <laughs> from half past seven, or I'm at the undisclosed location, uh, and I've been a busy boy today. Uh, man, old person. Um, I've just been very busy. I broke. I had, I had a bit of freedom at lunchtime, snuck out, and then I had to come back in. And then I uh, snuck out again uh, around the time everybody finishes work. Uh, and then, being the grown-up that I am, I did some dishes and snuck back in here. <laughs> Seems to be my running theme, where I finish a day of whatever activity is doing. If I'm not wrestling or going to the, the gym in the evening, nobody wants to do that. You want to go in the morning when it's dead. Uh, yeah, I had the pleasure of doing the dishes again, because anybody think in my house, I had like 35 people, and you only need to use one pan to cook everything. So yeah, it's been, it's been a it's been a lot. cabin fever would probably strike it or shed insanity. Call it what you want. It's my little, my little, my little happy uh, escape place. <laughs> We're obviously on Thursday, so how's the week been for you, my friend? Uh, good, very good. Um, I bought a website domain. Uh, next stop, billionaire, um, mustache, things to do. Uh, it's currently a work in progress, so I bought that. Uh, my diet has been on point after I fell out with myself for uh, falling out of Love with my shape again. Um, I've not had any lager for over a week now, so that's weird. Usually, I usually have a nice little drink on a Thursday, but no, no there's none, none required, none in the fridge. Uh, the week is good. The week is very good. It's very good, thank you. How about yours? It's been not too bad, you know, usual stuff, working and stuff. Obviously, Friday's rolling around and stuff, but yeah, keeping busy <laughs> as always. So, yeah, we've got a great week. Jim, of course, I mean, when I asked you to do this, you immediately went, yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, Wing Commander Nash has become a bit of a almost like an urban legend within my like friendship group. Um, I think it's the just the sort of out there nature of it. Like, I think it's fair to say that you have a very distinctive persona when you wrestle as Wing Commander Nash. <laughs> and I think it really lends itself to a lot of imagination. And, um, yeah, you're definitely a talking point when, whenever I've seen anybody who's seen you for the first time. <laughs> good, good. That's the example. I should be able to arrive, you see me, you want to buy tickets to come back and see me some more. That's my purpose. That's why I'm there for you. That's oh, lovely yeah, to hear. Oh, so, yeah. Today's show is obviously about you. We've got loads of stuff to talk about. We say this to everyone. If there's anything we ask which you don't feel comfortable talking about, just mm -hmm. say next question, we move on. But a lot of people are quite are open books, but you just got to be careful. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's absolutely fine. I'm, I'm I'm, here to chat away and disclose. I said a bad word on stream yesterday and nobody caught it and cut it and put it out there on social media, so that's nice. <laughs> 
said it, there was instant regret. I, I felt a bit sick. I was like, I can't believe that word came out. It wasn't too rude of a word, but it was definitely a situation that shouldn't have been said on a stream, but it was rated for mature audiences. So there is that. There you go. There you go. So, Jim, I'll tell you what, White Kickers off with your question. Well, I was going to start with, like, you know, how did you get into wrestling? But since you mentioned things being said on social media, um, when I. When I uh, looked at your sort of, what do we call them tweets now, or do we call them X's or whatever we call uh, them? They're always going to be tweets, and it's always going to be Twitter. Yeah, it's just a temporary nameplate. So you put out a tweet a couple of weeks ago that you were watching X Men '97. So yep. did you watch this week's episode? Oh, nice, cool. Start where there's tears in my eyes, and um, yeah, <laughs> I, I, like at first of all, I'm like, I'm not down for Magneto and Rogue, but you know, comic lore and bits and bobs. But that end, that ending, I, I legitimately, I don't often do this, but I messaged three friends, and I was like, but by any chance, have you watched this? No, no, no. Stop what you're doing. Go get it watched, and then a weird yeah. response. Wow. It just, took a wow. turn this week. Oh, I was like, oh, there's a, I'll just, don't mind me, I'll go stand in the corner and have a cry. That was, <laughs> that was, um, that was, that was, yeah, I was like, oh, rogue, lovely. Oh, amazing. Oh, cute dance. Hey, up, going a bit weird. Hang on, what's he doing here? Oh, it, it was a roller coaster of emotions. It was the equivalent of me still backstage in just a pair of underpants and my music's playing and I have to put a full attire of clothes on and get out. It, it was wild, <laughs> wild. Does that happen often that you're just backstage Twice. in your It's Twice. <laughs> and there was no runner, and the venue was a little bit of an adventure, and I was half-dressed. So if you ever see me at a show and I only have trunks on and no tights and trunks, that is why. <laughs> when, the knee pa- when, when the knees are exposed fully, I've been, I've been caught unaware. <laughs> Either that or I've been too busy in my own little world to feel like <laughs> I should have been ready and leaving. <laughs> That's brilliant. That's brilliant. So I want to focus obviously on the true grit thing. Obviously, that's a big yeah. part of obviously what you are. How did it obviously come to be the obviously start working for True Grit? Well, see, times and dates for me are gonna be Rufus, too many kicks to the head, um, or knees or fists. Um, True Grit, I remember it's uh, birth show. I was in the crowd, uh, happily flipping the middle finger off at the bad guys and cheering and uh Wesley and Sarah Cole was on it and it was exciting and it was good fun. Um, and that was in Leeds at Cardigan Fields. I can't remember the exact time it started, but that company was came from the school that I used to train at there. So obviously everybody was like, have you seen this venue? Look at this. We want to work in here because I remember my first uh, wrestling show outside of training school was on a nuclear power plant. Came away with zero superpowers. Worst event of my life. All I got was a full belly of food and had a laugh. But uh, the True Grit shows, as they'd gone on, I was, uh, how to how to describe my wrestling career? It's like looking at a CV of somebody who's travelled and they go, can you explain these gaps in between jobs? And it was like, it was a gap yard. I went to a gap yard. Or I was kidnapped. So because I wasn't regularly training back then as much as uh, I started to do again, I didn't get access onto the shows but obviously i'd help out the shows because that was the thing when with your school you go help and you do the ring job and you watch all your friends wrestle and you go one day i'll be on there and i genuinely can't remember if the first show i appeared on it definitely i think it was the york rumble they had a rumble in york at uh, a bar oh god if i can remember the name of the bar now it's a wicked venue um and i think it came out as nash hogan a mexican luchador chap uh, El Nash um, and something else and basically I just got battered I, 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 I can't remember, I wish I could remember it and the weird part was the promoter was talking to me about this about when I first came to True Grit or first did the show and it's just, it's basically from whenever <laughs> before, uh, before that weird thing that happened and the entire world had to put the brakes on uh, and then reoccurring and starting up again it was just it's just been a case of I've just never been able to win, no matter what's happening. So the daft stuff like I could wrestle elsewhere and win somewhere elsewhere, win a title elsewhere. A true grit, never, never, never had a single win. And it was starting to get quite bothersome to the point where I got mad pre-COVID that I'd lost to Boris Kozlov. Boris! And I was I was physically mad to the point where I'd caused an audible gasp because at the end I like started leathering the ring because I was frustrated with it. And then the world stopped. And then everybody shaved their heads and 
decided to do TikToks. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then it came back and I was like, I might need to grow some hair. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, then we just started again. And then it was smaller spots, smaller spots, uh, or more in matches, and then still losing, not coping very well, to ending up having Ace Matthews offer guidance so so far i think i'm going through the the 10 steps of being a professional wrestler by ace matthews i'm not sure he's made this book but i'm pretty sure that's the way he's going with it but at the moment nothing's getting a nice tick on it. it's all getting fat exits <laughs> it's just, yeah it's, it's it's not the most exciting thing like i i, I like seeing my face on the, seeing my face on the poster was good it took some years to get that that's when i knew i'd finally arrived uh and i realized i found it when I walked past one in Leeds City Centre and I had to do a double take and I went, oh, and I'm pretty sure the people that were queuing before they closed off Leeds City Centre for the roadworks and there's me looking at me, taking a picture of me in shock and awe and the person in the car looking at me going, why is he taking the picture of a man on a poster? Because the difference is I have a tash and the poster don't have a tash. <laughs> so <laughs> so it was it was good. Uh, I think the, the, the images that True Grit used for me uh, initially before the weird... Uh, sailor's hat one that they started using fibbers that was it fibbers in york that picture was taken in fibbers in york uh at the venue backstage and i was asked i asked if i could have some photos cheekily I wasn't on the show and i got some photos and it ended up being those photos being used for true grit so it was like i take photos here you might see my face as you're scrolling through your roster or your pictures and go like, who's that oh yeah that's nice <laughs> so maybe subliminary subliminary um, that's how that may be created, but I'd love to tell you the day it was, but it was a long, long time ago when I had less grey on the sides and top of my head. <laughs> Jim, back to you. Yeah, well, you mentioned there that you, you've you not won a match in true grey, and uh, as I said in the intro, like, this friend of mine who was sort of talking you up and everything sold it to me as though that was your ongoing storyline, and is it deliberate then in True Grit that, and do you think about like, because it, it's building a lot of momentum, this idea that people want to see whether that'll be your win, whichever show it is. And do you think about, is there a, a right time to pull the trigger on that? And what happens after our win? I've been pulling the trigger every time I've run in the ring. I, I just want to have, I want to know what it feels like to win at True Grit and have the people like gently chant and wave and go, yeah, congratulations. At the moment, I'm so used to losing. It's just, like, I don't know whether the the last show that we did at Left Bank, um, I asked if I could come out to Will Smith's Wild Wild West, right? There was no ace with me. I was like, I'm going to come out like a poncho wearing gunslinger with a duck sombrero hat. And I was like, this is it. Play Wild Wild West. I learned the dance, right? This is how far I went to the, I did the Wild Wild West dance. YouTube were great for that. Nailed it. I thought I could make it in this particular time with the edit. And then he went, we're going live. You won't be getting Wild Wild West. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so if I could envision my Will Smith, I would go out and whoever's opposite me in the ring would get the big old slap for not taking my wife's <laughs> name out of the mouth. They'd go down. That'd be the pin. Shoot some imaginary guns. The win's done. I can't wheel out the building, never to be seen again. Just walk off into the distance and have some... Some Red Dead Redemption music playing as I walk down back into Leeds City Centre from the venue. <laughs> so, me for me, winning wise, I'd love, I genuinely love a win. Uh, I think it's wanting it and then getting it. Um, I've not, I genuinely, I genuinely have no idea how I'm going to react when it does happen. I think it'd be more of a case of it's probably going to feel like a complete fluke, or it'll be a three win, ding, 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 and I'm. I'm going to sit there and go, yeah, that was definitely a two. He definitely kicked out a two as I try to pick him up and give him another massive F5 or a, an eject to see and try to get the job finished. So if you are my opponent when I win, I'm sorry, but you're getting drilled three or four times just to make sure that you're definitely not getting back up, but it's definitely a win. That's as much as you get in there. <laughs> if you have a really small opponent that's got a tendency to lay down and sleep, that will be fantastic. That, that's all I require, just... In fact, there's an idea. Might have a blanket match, and the first opponent to fall asleep loses. Mm. Oh dear. Chris Holt says, so deliberate. So Are you trying to tell me wrestling is predetermined? Next, you will tell me Santa isn't real. Uh, hey, we discovered in this house uh, at Christmas, my 12 year old told me that Santa isn't real. I fell off the sofa. Uh, 
I had to go in the kitchen and just have a stiff drink and try my best to not call her a liar to her face. <laughs> it's all it's all real. It's all real. It's as real as what's really current at the moment that everybody really likes and enjoys. It's as real as X-Men 97 was. That's how real it was. <laughs> it's as real as that. Those really colourful people on the TV screen that live in a non dual area. I don't know where they're recording, but it's so vibrant and fresh coloured. It's as real as that. I will burn says, Love you, Nash. I will burn arts in the comments, so uh... Oh, Wilbur! Um, uh, f fun fact, I promised that man I would, he asked me a question and I would answer it. Um, and I've told him it's prepared to be answered. Just, I, I apologise, it is it is on its way. He'll know what I mean by this if he can scratch his head and go, God, that was ages ago, Nash. <laughs> is it this one I'm going to ask next? Is it a loser makes a noise match? Um, the, the, that was, that was a thing. Um... <laughs> <laughs> do you know what hurts me right everybody backstage was like that was that was fantastic that was great and i genuinely i was like oh call me barry big groin i was like walking around going, i had a fun uh i arrived at the venue i flew to newcastle because i don't drive because uh, i'm a pilot and um i landed saw my opponent i went my word you are a mime and he went yes and i went you're not a mime now because you just said yes and I says, do you want to have first one to make a noise uh, loses? He laughed. We went for it. It would have gone It would have gone swimmingly if the referee hadn't taken my brass knuckles out of my hand, right? <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely enjoyed that. That was some of the most bizarre. I like, oh, what about the real curtain? I, I like to ideally have fun uh, with whoever I've got as an opponent because there's a place for everybody on a on a match card in my eyes. So you serious boy who doesn't smile and kicks you. You've got your tag teams, you get your ladies wrestling, we've got intergender matches, we've got all kinds of good stuff that can be available on any card whatsoever. And you something for everybody, because not one person's gonna go to a show and go, I absolutely loved every bit of that. Because if they say that they've gone to the wrong kind of show or they're clearly high on drugs. Um and when he when I put this idea to him um, as a as an idea of what I think would work well as something silly and good, and he approved of it, and we put it to work to go. The day after, the promoter of the company was like, "We're doing it, Silence in Violence Two," and I was like, "But no, Silence in Violence One was the one. <laughs> it was the Terminator Two of the quadrilogy." <laughs> um, it, yeah. Silence in Violence was a great laugh for me, just purely. There was a lady in the crowd, and as I tried to get them to do a, a clap, but without making a clap, she started laughing. So obviously, I zoned in on her and I was like, and then she tried to like stop it. She was putting her head under a jacket, and I could just see her head going like this. <laughs> uh, it, that, that for me, that was, a, that was a sterling, sterling adventure. I genuinely, genuinely enjoyed that. I, I, that's what I would say. Never seen the footage back ever. Never. So. That moment will last in the people's brains who were there in Newcastle and saw it live, never to be seen again. Never to be seen I, again. I will then say Silence in Violence is one of the best matches that I've ever seen. Incredible storytelling. And I've never duplicated anything like that ever again. So, <laughs> it's the Terminator 2 of however many of those Terminator movies they made. It's the, um, I want that on a QR code on my gravestone and then people can scan it and find the footage and go, ah, so much to say, but say nothing at all, and that'll be it. That'll be me done. <laughs> and then, right, then Jim, back to you. <laughs> well, you you mentioned a little bit there about sort of pulling the curtain back, and we had the the question using the word predetermined. But sort of in the modern era, I think it's fair to say a lot of fans know what the what the score is. For you as a fan, I'm presuming you were a wrestling fan when you were younger, was the sort of a light bulb moment when you, you realised what it was and did that make you more interested in getting into it? Or? Um, I was uh, I was 30, one-ish, uh, and I went to a training school um, and I took my first bump. <laughs> and then I was like, that hurt. And then we started going through moves and spots and stuff, spots, whatever. Uh, and I found out how the international sequence was created. 
Uh, and then, then was the only moment that wrestling was ruined for me. I had seen it done a million times. Send them off, sleep at the feet, hop over them, give them a move. Oh, just amazing. Not as you don't see much of it now, but obviously back then as a kid, watching Bret the Hitman Hart going to work and him being the greatest Intercontinental Champion as a kid, or watching uh, Sergeant Slaughter punch Hulk Hogan in the head repeatedly and then the surgically stitched bandaged on his big forehead, getting pulled and pulled and slowly but surely more blood coming from Hogan's head. I was like, it was the best thing ever. Like me watching wrestling now, yeah, it took till 31 till I realized, oh, right. So this is how it goes. I thought it was going to be, you had to think about how you're going to fight and see how it goes. Because I'm very innocent like that. I'm so innocent. I didn't realize that Papa Shango and the Godfather were the same man. So there's, <laughs> so, so there's, there's that excitement in my life. <laughs> so that's how that's how very easily stupid I am. Um, it, <laughs> yeah, I, I I think I just, I like to watch wrestling and enjoy it. So if somebody says to me, oh, Nash, do you want to do a homework night? We'll watch some matches. I'll be like, of course, let's do it. Sit down. We'll have food. We'll watch it. And we'll go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three minutes it will take me before I'm back being a fan. And ignoring all the little intricacies that they're all doing in the ring, I'm going, oh, that will race. That will proper good. And then and then, WrestleMania was the perfect example. I could have been in here watching it. I could have made as much noise as I wanted, but I didn't. I decided to have it in the house. Uh, Sunday night or Sunday morning, uh, Monday morning, sorry, at four o'clock in the morning, whatever it was, when, uh, when the old Cody did the thing, I had to scream without screaming because there were other people in the house. So if, if there was anybody peeping on me, Jokes on you because I made no noise, but I was like, <laughs> I didn't want to wake nobody, so I was just internally screaming. I was going, and then I went out and bought the game. See, that's how they suck you in, don't they? They just <laughs> right. The next thing you know, you're popping out shop to grab a copy of 2K24, and then you find you, you the people that know you at shows online, and you think I better beat them because they'll think I'm stupid, and I get rinsed twice. And I was like, oh, it was that way we're going. I had Ridge Holland versus. Uh, one of the prophets, lads, Montel, Marcus, I've got the name wrong, sue me. Um, and we had that at WrestleMania 3. But when did, where did I win? As Hulk Hogan versus Ultimate Warrior in NXT 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> so, don't work for me, brother. It did that time because I won. And then I went as Elite Cody Rhodes versus Bray Wyatt. And for some reason, the triangle button didn't approve of my touch. He was like, I'm all right, mate. We're not having any of this. Montez Ford, thank you. The, him, right? That Chris Alt lad. That he he Chris Alted me. <laughs> <laughs> so I got battered twice and I turned my console off. And then I went, no, I'm having none of it. I'll just download the eight gig of stream and I'll review it later when I probably never will. Sorry, I've got Are you gonna do are you gonna do a creator wrestler of Wing Commander Nash? Uh I got he always do, because it's the law. I've done it since SmackDown. Excellent. Here comes the pain. And I used to dress as a member of the NWO or DX, depending on how I was feeling back then. Um, or there'd be Spider-Man, because there'd be people on the internet making Spider-Man. I remember printing off some sheets and going, right, need all these codes and attributes and I'll make a perfect Spider-Man. Remember when Fred Durst was in it? That was wild. Um, yeah. He used to come out to his rolling, rolling entrance <laughs> and look at his wonky knees, rolling, rolling, rolling. Um, so I always create my own, apart from the last couple of games that have come out. Uh, my daughter, she likes to create her character. So I sit and watch how she designs hers, and then, God love her, when she gets battered by the absolute annihilation of the first ever opponent that she's got on, like, my rise, I'm like, you'll get better, you'll get better. I was like, no, you won't. Your attributes are rotten. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, um, I'll create my character this year. Um, I'm going to go I'm gonna go all Japan style and just play in black trunks. Uh, it's definitely has a moustache. Uh, and then I might even go kick pads and proper be a little bit like someone's definitely getting kicked in the head. And use zero kicks. Um, but I always like it if uh, wrestling fans created it. Last year, there was a, a, a few absolute bangers of me were made. Um, I'd been done as Wing Commander Nash. They'd done me as Miles' dad in Rise. Then they had the alternate attires where it used to be in a singlet. And I was like, whoa. And then I'd download it. And then I'd get Brock Lesnar and I'd beat myself up. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, man. It's good. The wrestling world and fans are brilliant. Oh, oh, there's always something nice to be had from a wrestling fan. But a wrestling fan don't like. I know there's a there's an elite squad of three that come to shows 
and I make a very avid point of getting right in their fa face and killing them with kindness. And I know, I know deep down, they detest me, and it's my favourite thing to get on them. <laughs> Absolute favourite. <laughs> so, what's your favourite wrestling game you played then, out of all of them? Uh, phew, here comes the pain. To the point. Have I betrayed myself? No, there it is. Sorry, lads. We're going off. We've gone on a tangent. We've gone on Wing Commander Nash's game collection. Uh, da, 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 da. Get out of the box. Oh, yeah. Here comes the pain. Look at that. Should do a YouTube makeup video. I'm using the Here Comes the Pain palette. Um, that will be available in Sky Blue. But don't forget, Just Bring It is also available. And uh, never ever buy from CEX because they outdo you on a manual. Dirty, sweaty beasts. I'll tell you, got a receipt in that one, but no manual. Shocking behaviour. Disgusting. Sh shame on yourselves. Somebody on the internet is working for CEX and selling game manuals and slowly buying millions of properties. The worst <laughs> thing's when you buy a film and they photocopy the DVD sleeve. Oh, the the, I've seen some shit. Do you know what? I, um, I have some good experiences and then I have some bad experiences. And uh, I bought... Oh, I went to trade in uh, a set of headphones because I'd upgraded uh, Xbox headphones. And he went, have you got the uh, USB Type-C charging cable that goes with this? I was like, no. Uh, when I bought them from you, it didn't come. We went, oh, well, we'll have to knock you five pounds off because I haven't got a cable. I was like, oh, really? Pound shop. There you go. <laughs> so just, I was like, yeah, little shysters coming for me like that. Unreal behavior. But yeah, um, here comes the pain because I was a huge Brock Lesnar fan. To the point where you just stand there in the bathroom and you're like, oh, I'm so massive. When I finish brushing my teeth, I'm going to pick my mum up and throw her downstairs in an F5. Not that you would, because that'd be awful. But yeah, so that, you. that action, the activity, the animations, it was all good fun. So you've mentioned like a, a couple of different promotions that you've appeared in. Mm. Um, can you give us a bit of an idea? So what it's like working within the British scene, because a lot of people seem to do a lot of different promotions. And how does that all work? Just give us a bit of insight into what the British scene looks like these days. Do you know, um, I can't like super comment like on um, the the whole of the scene because I don't work as regular as everybody else. Um I know my place in a card, so if there's no place for me on that card in the promoter's eyes, that's absolutely fine because I, if, I, if I'm ever asked to work for a company, I ask them, what do you think? If, if there's a way I can benefit the show, how do you think we can do it together? Because it's, it, I, I, I've always seen it like it's, 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 it's not show friends, it's show business, so to me. And obviously my time away from my house um, or my kids, um, that's why I have a mustache things to do because when I'm not, in front of a camera or in a stage, um, my time predominantly, apart from washing the dishes or trying to get a cat off a bed that's pretending to be dead. And I'm like, move, you're in my spot, get out. Um, <laughs> so when I go to shows, working for the companies, it's the same process, arrival, find out when the rings come in, arrival, see, you end up seeing the similar faces that deliver the ring, have a catch up with them, have a chat. Do what I did, go to Sheffield, leave your coat behind, three days later I have to go back and collect your coat, but then come back and then find you've got a parking 500 quid because you were too late to leave the venue and then you have to go back to the venue. That was hilarious. Um, but yeah, so any other company that you go to, doesn't matter for me, wherever I've travelled, it's the same, same thing, arrive, meet wrestlers that are there, uh, any, any of the other workers, whether it's camera people, uh, referees, merchandise, uh, ring crew wrestlers, uh, friends and family that are there at the same time. It's, it's it, you there going with the, my my mindset is I'm obviously a bit of a, a sausage and I'm fooling myself quite often. Um, and I can go off on a wild little happy tangent, but that's me. But you kind of greet everybody, say hello, play catch up if you haven't seen somebody for ages, and then it's down to business because that's what it is at the end of the day. Ask the promoter, what are you needing from us today for your show? Uh, to obviously want to see if there's going to be a continuation if you're going back to that company. It's it's making. You want to make sure that the promoter's happy and that what the promoter wants to put on for you to put on for the paying customers because at the end of the day, anybody can go viral on the clip and it's great and it's lovely because you get that admiration. But if Mr. and Mrs. Smith have brought their kid 
and then their kids happy because all kids are happy when they're fighting if their parents are not in world they're like i'll go but can you take him because i can't be bothered going is is that's how i see some parents whereas if the parents are enjoying it at the same time they're not going to have issue paying money to bring their kids back in again and then go oh yeah there's that idea that comes out that pretend pilot lad from 50s and or there's that big meathead with muscles that throws people here there and everywhere so for me it's the the british scene itself uh i imagine it's thriving because we've got a lot of activity there's more than enough ways to watch shows now more and more companies are starting to uh, stream their product on it uh, if, there's, if there isn't already an on-demand service um my tv in here uh the um, <laughs> I, I looked at my streaming services and i went i haven't watched that i'll get rid of that i'll save 9.99 <laughs> i had to have like a little cull and then sod's law smart happens and you end up resigning back in to watch it but yeah for, for my my outlook on it is um you're there to do a job uh, as fun as silly as it is it's all grand and then when the rings away you can all head home or fly home like i do but i usually land at a mcdonald's eat an obscene amount of food and then go home and complain that my stomach don't feel right because I've eaten far too much. Uh, and I've been told I'll have to sleep on the sofa for, for the fear of breaking wind and waking up the other half. It's just a dangerous life, really. Get beaten in the ring, get beaten by a wife. What do I really need to do more of? <laughs> <laughs> What's the go-to McDonald's order? Uh, at the moment, it's chicken selects and the McCrispy combination. Um, it depends because my diet's recently had an overhaul. Uh, one of the shows I did in Selby, uh, the promoter, fantastic, sent me the match footage back the next day. I was super gassed to see that. It's all the silliness, and I just saw my silhouette, and I was like, I've done it again. I've let myself go. Um, so at the moment, <laughs> I look like I look like a rabbit when I eat now. Uh, the, 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 you know when you open a fridge, you've got that big salad box <laughs> where people just occasionally put like tins of beer in, because that's what I used to do. I'd be like, oh, can I fill this? Of course I can. A nice 18 pack will fill this. I open it now, I'm like, oh, look, there's the uh, carrots that I sliced and the cucumber. There's some kale. Uh, and to the other cupboard, we have a selection of nuts to chew from. Uh, and then we go back here, we've got uh, sections of fish. Uh, I cook some chicken. It's, yeah, it's, it's bland. But uh, I have started to drop weight now. So it's nice. So what I'm actively doing, uh, I'm finally under 17 stone. Uh, and I have threatened the lads um, saying, think about this, lads. If I get in shape and learn how to wrestle, you're all in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so so the goal for me at the moment is to half scare the lot of them by being in shape. Um, and then I will potentially get beaten and lose uh, like I do a true grit. I'll be able to take my T-shirt off, blind them with my uh, Peter Andre 1996 Mysterious Girl abs, throw some water in the air, big cutter. These are the plans, you see. You've got to think forward. What, what's the plan of action? That's what I'm thinking. Absolutely. So last week you was at Planet Wrestle. I was teaming up with the Music Man against the Pop Punk Kid and Chili yep. Heat with Chili Heat. How did this <laughs> talk about this match and obviously the build up and stuff? Um, yeah, there was. Um, me and Chili have met previously. Uh, we had some silliness with Chili. Uh, Chili this time, um, apart from doing some some maneuvers on me. And causing me to be a little bit, he, he smacked my boom, tied me into a bit of a pretzel. Uh, it was just all around shenanigans from him. He's definitely, while he's been at Pursuit Pro Wrestling, he's definitely putting his time and, and his teaching and training in. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a swine on the mats, bless him. Um, yeah, we had a good fun. And obviously, we had the music man. So this is my first time with the music man. And he, he loves to shout, well, well, and just be very like Elvis Presley esque. So as soon as he was shouting, well, I obviously decided there's only one word that comes after well. Oh, well, several words. And he went, well, I went, it's the big show. And I was going to <laughs> a single on just to whip an arm out. So it was um, it was fantastic. Uh, Planet Wrestle is, a <laughs> is, is just one of my new little favorite family-friendly shows. Um, and then somebody, we'd, we'd put putting the ring up and somebody put some stuff on and went, have you seen this? And lo and behold, there was another poster saw my face on it and i went hey, there we are the same same graphic from true grits tashless wink amanda nash available on posters in leeds and i was like nobody's gonna recognize that me look at that filtering and um yeah it was nice to see myself on there so obviously going forward i'm probably still gonna be on planet wrestle which is great because i love them shows they are there's a there's like wrestling is a variety show and that's what they offer as as it should be a bit of everything for everyone on there 
Uh, lots of love for Planet Wrestle. I, I don't know, or any company that wants me to work from, lots of love for them. Uh, unless, what's worst case scenario? Unless I get a hundred pound car parking fine, which then gets resolved. Um, or, or you drive to the McDonald's post show and everything's gone, and the McDonald's staff close the door and you are not allowed in unless you've got a just eat bag. And I, I promise you, I definitely haven't Googled a just eat bag on eBay <laughs> <laughs> just to leave in the back of the plane, not a car. So, yeah, um, yeah, I, I enjoy it. every company I work for has, has always been some good. I've never had a negative thing where I've come back and gone, ultimately, never again. The, 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 there could be hiccups, but there's hiccups with everything. But mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, Planet Wrestle for Laugh. Music Man, all the way. Have you seen his gear? He's got like, mm -hmm. you know, obviously wrestlers have kick pads. So his gear, sorry, if anyone's got foot fetish, claim it now because I'm wearing socks. Um, his kick pads are designed so they'll look just like cowboy boots. Now, I've got a thing for people's gear. Not a weird thing, but if you want to put a, like effort and detail into your ring gear, I'm here for it because I want to see how creative you can buy. This is coming from a man that wrestles in a, in a green T-shirt and a pair of blue tights and trunks because, hey, <laughs> I'm from the 1940s. But his ring gear was just like solid. Like the cowboy boots as kick pads blew my mind. I thought, if I'm ever doing a cowboy gimmick, because I do want to do that at some point, I'm definitely going for the kick pad covers that look like cowboy boots rather than wearing actual cowboy boots. Oh, just stunning. Little little bits of detail that I love. Give so back to you. Well you've you've talked there like you you said you quite fancy doing a cowboy gimmick and you've alluded to Wing Commander yep. Nash being from the 40s. How does that come about then? At what point did you decide I'm gonna be a 1940s aviator? That's gonna be the way to go. <laughs> Okay, so when I first started wrestling, I was J.G. Nash, the geek of British wrestling. Um, the Dudley got uh, glasses, uh, braces, a shirt, a pair of trousers that were cut into shorts with a lovely seam on them. So they were folded nicely over my knees. Uh, I had a pocket money in the bank briefcase, and I also had the Wonder Pants Championship. I, I invested myself. I say invested. We got a rebate from the utilities company of like 280 quid. This was years ago. So obviously I ordered a belt with it from uh, India. Um, so when The Rock revealed the big logo championship belt, I had one made and it was my autograph, which was the J and the G. I did that and the camera's in the opposite way. But it said Wonder Pants where it said champion. So I was the Wonder Pants champion because I wore Wonder Pants to wrestle in. Right? But basically cartoons from the 80s or other relevant themes. So as I've started my wrestling career, I'm doing this geek thing and... I'm getting a bit older and I start to see more grey hairs appearing. I went, oh no, I'm going to have to act more older. And I was like, what's older? I was like, gentleman. As you get older, you become a wiser gentleman. I was like, what's my favourite kind of gentleman? A calm gentleman. And then the gentleman became more and more, hello, it's, it's me. <laughs> and then I was like, I now fly planes. <laughs> I was like, um, I have the heart of a Hawker Hurricane, which turns out to be a Rolls Royce engine. I was like, boom, that's me. Let's have a look at the attire. I'm now, and that's it. Then I actually, I actually do have a pilot's license, a real life, legit pilot's license. And I was like, this makes perfect sense. I was like, but I'm not coming out as the Top Gun type dude. As much as I'd love a boiler suit and just whip out of that and be a set of gear down for it, I was like, no, no, I want something else. And then there was a comedian in the early '90s. I want to say Russ Abbott, but I don't. At the same time, just to get it wrong, and he. He portrayed a pilot that had just crash landed and he had the scarf that stands out like that and he had bullet holes all in it, had the moustache, the hat, the jacket. And I was like, Googled and I was like, yep, ordered the jacket. That's definitely my size. Oh, China, you dirty liar. When that arrived, <laughs> I was like, oh, this jacket doesn't quite fit. I'm going to have to stretch it. So have you ever seen a grown man climb in a jacket and then sit in the bath and then tense around it in the bath to get out and then do some more stretching to then walk around in it for a short period to then take it off and then let it air dry so it was a little bit longer because when i put that jacket on and my arms were down the sleeves came to there i was like oh no and being as my tight yorkshire lad i refused to buy another jacket so if i get any hencher i'm gonna have to cut the sleeves off the jacket that's my only next plan of action but that is unfortunately how i went from the geek of british wrestling that lived at home with his mum to get in a job in an airport, see where we're going. It was cleaning, yep. 
And then he got a job in the airport. And then before you know it, he's got a pilot license and now he flies planes. And he doesn't live at home with his mum because he's got his own property. Mm -hmm. The geek of British wrestling grew up. He's got silver in his hair and he's pounds in his pockets. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I win Commander Nash. <laughs> oh, this is brilliant. Uh, in preparation for this show, the craziest thing I actually saw was you and Miles Kamen. What the hell is this about? Uh oh. Is which what? Uh, what did we do? Was it the Mario? Mario yeah. Well, the crazy things you guys come up with it's absolutely crazy. Talk about working with Miles. Uh, oh wow, uh, Miles is an actual gift to British wrestling. Um, he is he's like more dialed in than ever. Ever. He's like, if I could go back and be young again, I'd like to take the adventures that Miles has taken um, and the stuff he learned. Watching him in the ring um, and some of the shenanigans that we've come up together with um, and done as the concept of a father and son, um, it may, it's easy for me because I'm legitimately a parent with uh, a 22-year-old boy and a 12-year-old girl. I like to space them out by 10 years. <laughs> um, just the dynamic of being a father son so rise when they came to me um the owner of rise wasn't a fan of wing commander at all didn't suit his uh his plans for rise which is perfectly fine because if you're putting on a show you what you think so he said, he said to me he says you're gonna be miles's dad and i was like okay that's cool um i am able to do this because you have to leave yourself uh open creativity of, of sorts because it's wrestling so it's not as simple as somebody going Tonight you're a bad guy. Well, sometimes it is. Uh, or tonight you're the good guy. Or tonight this is going to happen, but we need you to do this. And I was like, cool. Uh, there was already a story being built by Miles in Rise where his dad stopped the deathmatch shows and any any kinds of wild violence. So all these fans <laughs> go to the show getting drunk. And then Miles comes out and is like, you lot have come here for this certain particular deathmatch. Well, I've just been on the phone to my dad because obviously he's a rich boy. Uh, and he's a lawyer, and uh, he's got it cancelled. It's not happening. Loads of heat. It was like watching Young Dom before Young Dom. So everyone's booing at him awful, and eventually the arrival of Miles' dad happens at the Rise Rumble, commemorated by a massive sort of chair that I've got here by Chair Freaks. 2019, that's the only way I can go for a date, because it's on the chair. Um, so Miles' dad comes in as the lawyer, um, and then there's a rumble. So I've come out, and we've done a, a, a promo and a chat and a, had a giggle. Miles is like, I've made a point of not hugging him and not shaking his hand because it's business. Um, and then just being a bit of a sausage. It was only going to be a temporary thing, I believe. But because of the rumble started, uh, the wrestlers were going out and I came out and I genuinely thought I was going to be hated because I'd stopped these death matches and everything else like that. I walked out, horrifically loud pop. I'm dressed in a... Uh, a singlet and a pair of shooters, and I've called myself Her Ankle rather than Kurt Angle because obviously I know wrestling as a dad. <laughs> Shenanigans, stupidity, and then from there it kind of stemmed where Miles's dad became a part of faction within Rise, and then we hated each other. We were fighting with each other every other show, um, and every time I got, on, I was about to win. I remember one point we were in Middlesbrough. And I had Miles by the scruff of the neck and I spat on my fist and I went, this is going to hurt you more than it's going to hurt me. And then I went to go punch him in the face and then I got low blowed and rolled up. So it's, I was never able to finish hitting my own child, um, which sounds awful online. So I look forward to the hit from that. Um, the story goes on. Shows are coming back for rise. Stuff's happening. We are aware of each other. Every time he sees me, I want to hurt him. Every time he sees me, vice versa. And then at one show, we in a rumble because how it starts is how it ends. We're in a rumble, bang, bang, people flying bodies everywhere, back to back without rising. We knock backs, turn around, see each other. Remember, I've never hugged this boy for however many years it's gone on from rice. So from 2019, never given one hug, no fably hug. The crowd have chanted for it, never got a hug. Jumps up, big massive hug. The Miles Dynasty is now back on the same page, leading to today. Um, <laughs> we've been. The Mario Brothers, we've been Batman and Robin. We've I came out as a terrible looking Volta. Um at one point in just a pair of trunks and a large coat and coming out to opera music, that was nice. Um the dynamic going forward for us is we are currently heading uh, we we want the, the 
the new, soon to be arriving at some point, Rise Tag Team Championships. So we've declared that we've been the, the we're the best ever Rise Tag Team we've ever had um, in the business. So I imagine the tag teams of Crash Boat uh, or Boy One and Boy Two, as we refer to on there, well, they've split now as well. So yeah, so at the moment we are the only tag team. So it makes sense that we get a tag team championship, uh, and then I can parade that around and not do it, obviously. But the stuff with me and Miles is is it's been uh, a nice natural flow. It almost felt like it was real, real, but at the end of the day, it's like he's he's my wrestling child. But he's not my child. But the dynamic of us two together, um, the, one of his favorite moments in Rise, he won't mind saying this because he reminds me of it quite regularly, is one of the rumbles. He eliminates me uh, and thinks he's clever. And then I end up sneaking back in to eliminate him. And the eruption from the Broodnell Club in Leeds when he got eliminated and I pointed and laughed at him was one of his finest moments because of the sheer volume of, of the building shaking and whatnot. Nash Miller title, never a hey, whoever said that. I used to be a pro wrestling for you, tag team champion with JC Thunder. So in your face. Um, <laughs> so it's yeah, like the dynamic for me and Miles. Um, we discussed what's happening in May briefly. Uh, there'll be no spoilers, but Will Smith may be involved, <laughs> and it's not Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> but if you expect me to pull up in a Ferrari and him to shoot my uh, dashboard with a gun, and then I get told I can't have money to repair it because it's a Ferrari and not a police car, we're definitely not doing bad boys neither. Um, I haven't got the physical specimen shape to be running around with my top off and beating people up. So we've discussed a couple of things. And we've got a few plans for that. But at the moment, uh, I just enjoy watching Miles just as a, as, as a human in general. Uh, the investment in himself, uh, his ring presence and attention to detail, uh, his moveset, agility, everything. He's, he's very much, if I was younger, I'd want to do the same things he's doing. Whereas I look at him now and go, <laughs> if I did that, I'd both my legs and blow off like a demolition derby doll it's um <laughs> it's it's great it's, it's such a wonderful you like you meet all kinds of people in wrestling all kinds um some people you don't think you'll get on with as like a uh how to describe a first impression when you meet somebody turns out mm -hmm. absolutely lovely humans laughing giggling away it's not like chinese whispers being played but you just think i don't think they'd talk to me for whatever reason and then it turns out to be absolutely lovely and miles is definitely just you can see it's like ridiculously hungry for it, and you can tell in everything that he does and says. Um, and just he just seeing him laugh, or if he turns around and sees me doing something ridiculous, and then watching him laugh, and it being a natural reaction from him, not a, a forced let's tell a story, I, it, it creeps me for days. So, a lot, of, a lot of love for Miles and everything he does. Uh, I hope he gets the world and more because he, he, he more than deserves it. The golden boy, God love him with his bling and his good gear. There's me and me playing blues. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, back to you. <clears throat> um, you've mentioned Wesley and Serico a couple of times, and for, don't know him. Don't know for, him. Pe for people who've um, not been watching Gladiators, he got to the the final in Gladiators, and a bit unfairly, he picked up an injury in it. And but my. My point is, when they were doing these kind of hype videos, if you were eagle-eyed, you could spot Wing Commander Nash in there. So, <laughs> was that pretty cool to me to be on the most watched TV show of the week? No, no, it was more cooler for him to be on the show. Um, <laughs> I, I I was obviously at the live shows, and I was wounded because he was playing Powerball, and the footage they used of me losing my mind, dressed similarly in Pokemon Chain and Black T-shirt. Uh, I jumped up to scream and then give everybody a good look at my belly. Um, unintentionally, but I was just gassed because that was when he did the eliminator in the semis. So I'd see I knew he was I knew he was final bound and I literally lost my mind. But the filming process for that, we were trying to find a location where we could do it because this says obviously, is there any other outside hobbies? Oh yeah, wrestle rah, rah, rah. So I was like, let's give uh, Pursuit Pro Wrestling in Sheffield a shout. Uh, and Nathan and Liam um agreed that we could film it in there with bbc and it was cool because they also got their brand shown on there at the same time or even yep. if it's for a quick a quick click like that you, you still got to see the venue obviously they've moved now and got bigger place uh but obviously it's still in sheffield it's all good but the film inside of that the crew were more than accommodating and asking if there was any particular thing we would like to do they, we would then think as wrestlers okay if you to do this and do this 
how cool would this look? And then he'd get the angle right, and then we'd run through it. And yeah, I just got my head kicked in. It was weird how many people on my Facebook, uh, under my real life name, were messaging me going, not being funny, but is this you? And I'm like, well, quite clearly it is me looking like I'm blowing out my backside. It was um, it was a good laugh, but seeing him do it, and the the I don't think many people realise that it's filmed over five days, so the whole process, everybody's just getting battered for five days. So for him to come through it, I, I went backstage to film with him, but my segment didn't air and I was raging because I said to him, like, if you don't win this, don't ever call me again. Mm -hmm. And um, he was wrapped in ice and he was just sat there and I was like, are you even in the room? And he was like, nope. <laughs> I was like, are you sleeping? What's going on here? He's, the whole process of it was wild for him. But I mean, he's done um, endurance running and marathons and ultras and stuff like that. He's He likes to push himself. So to see him... That physically broken. I hadn't seen him out since I tore his groin years ago when we were in training together and I tried to rip his leg off. So it's it's just, yeah, I've known him as long as I've been in wrestling. I've known him and we agreed we had a 10 year war and then we realized it had gone past 10 years and I was like, let's make it a 20 year war. So I've, I've still got him until I'm 50 to batter him properly. <laughs> He's a really, like, a genuinely another lovely human. Um, can't say enough good things about him. Um, we don't see each other as much as we should. But when we do see each other, it literally goes like that. And I'm like, we need to actually just say, let's not meet up on a wrestling show day. And then we can do the things away. Go go to the gym, get something to eat, come back into the, this little studio gaff shed uh, base <laughs> and just sit down, play some games together and just have like normal chat outside of wrestling and stuff. It's Life just gets faster and faster the older we get, which is what I'm realizing more and more now. So I remember being a kid and going, I want to grow up me. I want to have my own place. I'm like, don't do it. It's a dirty lie. Be a child forever. So it's um, yeah. Time just ramps up, and before you know it, I'll be I'll be waiting to cash my pension in, and I'll still be water one on True Grit. I'll be like, oh, I've worked till sixty six, and I'm still not winning. <laughs> yeah, but you'll get the military pension though from being an aviator. So you see that I'm just thinking, as long as I can like extend my garden to an actual runway, and then if I get really bored, I can just like land. I'll go. Come in and land, and if if I if I find out there's no ho no food cooked for me on the arrival home, I'll just smash into the conservatory and blame <laughs> blame the weather. That's all I can do. <laughs> but yeah, it's good, cool. Gladiators was fantastic. Uh, it was nice seeing the new versions of the wolf and the new versions of Jet Saber, um, and seeing the other uh, gladiators of Saber. And uh, did I mention Saber? Yeah, I like I really like Saber. Um, yeah, cool man. Uh, yeah, glad it, I'm ready for season two. Sorry, not sorry. May have applied as a contender and may have applied as a gladiator in Wing Commander Nash form because I'm that daft. <laughs> but there's over 5,000 applicants already, so I don't be, don't be expecting to see me on TV in July. Oh, it'd be brilliant if he did, though. Just watching it going, oh my god, that's Wing Commander Nash. And look, imagine that. Hi, you may remember me from series one. Uh, I got beaten <laughs> up by Wesley, the finalist. <laughs> and then imagine this I go in as a contender. Wesley returns as a gladiator, and uh, I messaged him. I was like, "Applications all sent." I was like, "Fun fact: if you are, if you do become a gladiator, and I do get to a contender, I'm legitimately going for both your knees." And he was like, "Cool, I remember that." <laughs> <laughs> so I don't even care for if it's an on-contact bit that we're doing at first. I'm just going to go straight for his knees and put him down. Oh. There you go. So one thing we've not spoke about is obviously the comedy side of wrestling. Mm. So a lot of people don't like that. A lot of people dig it. I personally dig it. What's, what's, what's your opinion, obviously, on comedy side of wrestling? Obviously, I know you, your character is obviously a big part of you. Yeah. Um, there needs to be... I'd love to be on every show being the comedy wrestler, but there's an awful lot of talented people that do it far better than me. Um. I I would want that little bit of breakdown before you get something serious to come through. So you want, depending on where you get placed on a, a card, I've gone on after an almighty all-weapons match, which blew the crowd's mind. And I just looked at my opponent and I was like, this is going to be tough. Because they were so like invested and, and screamed everything out for us to come out there. Like nothing was landing because people were like refuel and recharge at that point. And I was like, Oh man, so we tried what I thought would go, end up sinking. There's for me, for my character and how I treat wrestling, gauge the crowd, depending on what when I'm on, 
see what the crowd are like and what they're reacting to in the first match because that way you know what they're wanting to see for the rest of the show. So depending on who goes on first, you can you can get a rough eye of they like this kind of stuff, they don't like this kind of stuff. Right, who's my opponent? Do you mind me making a fool by doing this, this, and this? And they'll go, the lad will go, yes, or they'll go, no. If they say no, we'd do a, we'd, we'd meet in the middle. It's, do you remember theme park? We're at the game, and then you'd agree on wages, and sometimes the staff will pull their hands <laughs> back and forth, and you'd be like, come on, my, my PC's red hot, my mouse, my mouse ball needs cleaning, and they'd eventually shake hands. It's, it's that with wrestling. So you would try to find where I think this would be silly to do, but then if this happens, they get the options to do that. And then you hope for the best. There have been hundreds, not hundreds, there has been times where I've gone out and thought, this will make them laugh. And it doesn't. And you go, oh, I have died inside. But the next bit then catches them back out. So it's it's a judge of character for me. If, if you can read the crowd well enough, you know what you can get away with as long as making sure that your opponent knows that what you're doing isn't you going into business for yourself, if that makes sense. Like, Trying to put yourself super over and ignoring the other guy completely because that's just not goes. It's a two way, it's a two person dance, a two way street. We can't just one side it and put a ball out up on it. So for me, comedy should there should always be some element of fun in a wrestling show because wrestling is a variety show. You're not going to watch eight matches where the same style is happening over and over. If you want that, watch the same video on YouTube several times of two lads beating each other up in UFC. Um, you need variety. Uh, for anything of, of an entertainment purpose, it, it's it just makes sense. Like you can watch the Avengers movies, and there will be their their tones that they have. You know, you've got a backstory to a character, but you don't quite know what the end game is. No pun intended. Where it's going to go on this side, but that journey in between, it's not just we're the Avengers. We'll just avenge everything. Bam, 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 bam. Here's the big bad. There's the woo 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 woo. That to me is the easiest way to describe any wrestling show. I want to see a, a roller coaster of emotions, whether it's someone seething, spitting, and ready to stab somebody, to somebody like in love, to somebody crying because they can't believe that their favorite, that's usually a kid or me. And then just seeing this go. And then when the crowd leave, I want them to go, oh, but when this happened and when this happened, rather than, oh, do you remember that guy in the black hit the other guy that was in the black? I'm not saying wearing all black's a bad thing. Just saying how a, a wrestling fan would portray something. Say, what about that guy in the blue pants with the belly and the green T-shirt? I'm like, how very dare you? And then I'll fight them in the car park. It's that there should, there should be elements of everything. So I think with me knowing my place and my abilities and limits, I know what I bring and then the silliness that comes out of there. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a character. I'm a gob rather than you wouldn't see me in a, in a British rules match. Well, you would, but I'd be losing very quickly. Um, don't expect to see me in a, like a shoot on shoot match neither because I know about four holds and then I just have to slap them around the head and tap out. Um, not saying I wouldn't be willing to try, but it's it's yeah, there's always there's a place for comedy as much as there's a place for uh, a tag team match, there's a place for a women's match, there's a place for a multi man, but not too many multi men because too many multi men creates madness. Um, your main event vibes for title ship, title ships, title. Championships. There we go. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. Sorry, I keep going on tangents. I do apologize, chaps. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. Uh, Jim, back to you. Well, you're talking there about like how you you have ideas and you run them by, and it's give or take and everything. So, yeah. in the multi man match at the last True Grit show in York, you did a spot where. You brought out the bag, which everybody thought was going to be thumbtacks, but it was actually little squeaky rubber duckies. The thumbquacks. <laughs> the thumbquacks, that's it. So where did yeah. that come from? Uh, and was that's... there any pushback from anyone on that idea? No, 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 they'll be fine. I think I think you'll find a wrestler would much rather take uh, a nasty uh, <laughs> throw onto some rubber ducks than he would drawing pins. But that was more the Nashport stuff that's popping off with True Grit now and ducks. Um available to buy on every show um they they're they're now the thumb quacks going forward so they repeated so that happened in york there was ducks everywhere and then lo and behold i go through a table sucks to be me um and then the following show uh meat wagon thought they were big and brawly and bad and they went to go get the chalk threw in my face at the start of the show but you know 
There was no chalk in the bag to be yeeted at their opponent's faces. It was just ducks, which was great because obviously I appeared to point and laugh and get my comeuppance on them for being pains in the butt to me and mistreating like they did. So the thumb quacks uh, are just more from Nash, but I, I, I don't know how many duck ranged things we could possibly bring. I've yet to see what's arriving Saturday. So I'm, 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 I'm expecting weird and wonderful and then we'll work out how we will ruin people's lives with ducks. <laughs> uh, so you mentioned obviously Saturday now you're going to be in the corner of obviously Ace Matthews against yeah. Rory Coyle. What can we expect? Nash boat, Nash boat, Nash boat. That's all I can suggest uh, or say. Um, Ace, Ace is the death match cutie as he's referring to himself at the same time. Rory Coyle's not exactly known for just putting you in a chin lock. Um, I once took a DDT off Rory that was so wild, it threw my shoulder out and then I was trapped in a cage for 15 minutes of a match. That's up. Uh, I have a thumb quack on my PC at West Yorkshire 999. He's got, I've got a thumb quack. Where are we? Look, there's a, there's a real big thumb quack. Look, we'll do it. YouTube, we're going to use the yellow duck palette. This is Quack Turner. He was thrown violently across uh, the venue in Leeds and was found in the back. So the only reason why I know it's Quack Turner is because his jaw is all scratched up. So that's Quack Turner, a.k.a. Jack Turner, a.k.a. Jiggly Butt that I once sung to him while he was trying to be really mean to me opposite me in a ring and it made him laugh and then he got really angry and then landed on the head. Um, yeah, so, sorry. Uh, yeah, with regard to Saturday, this is definitely more Ace Matthews versus Rory and then me just being the pretty... Uh, Lady on this, I, I am. I'm, I might as well be the equivalent of a Trish Stratus, a Lita, a Cat, a China. Um, can't remember any of the girls from from current wrestling. I'll be, I'll be one, a, a, a managerial role, shall we say, as far as I can see, because I'm. A, it's not a. It's not a two on one. But if there's no DQ, then surely, in Spice Girls terms, the two become one, and then with, that sounded very suggestive. I apologise, or looked even. Um, it could be a two for one. So at this point, Ace Matthews could arrive on his own. But, do, but what happens if 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 Ace wins? Does that technically mean I win, and then that's my win, or is it Ace's win because we are a team, we are a cohesive unit, we are gelled? Or does Rory batter Ace and batter me? <laughs> <laughs> the only way to find out is head to Millthorpe School in York on Saturday and watch True Grit Wrestling Live. Wow, that was my promoter's turn. That was awful. <laughs> Jim, back to you. Um, well, I, I was going to see if we could get any more gossip on that match, but um, we won't do that. Um, you've mentioned... <laughs> uh, video games and gaming and Twitch and things like that, so... Yeah. You you do run a, a Twitch channel. Um, are you a big gamer? What games are you playing at the moment? Uh, I'm a huge gamer. I believe that um, having a personal interest and hobby outside of work um, or any work in any form, having your own personal interest and hobby is a great thing to have, whether it be collecting bottles of Prime, playing games, stamps, models, building Gundams and if there's if you have a personal interest that you love and enjoy doing the most do it because that's what makes you happy you uh you you you, you put on earth it, you, you work for your money some of your money gets taken by tax man and then you can't spend all that money because tax man's got it so your time that's your time to do enjoy your favorite thing that you like doing most so i applaud anybody and everybody that has a thing that they that's their special thing that they want to do i have I have no rules to what it is that that person does. I, apart, well, unless you're me, because I've got controllers of my favourite formats that have been decabled. Um, the, there's some 64 controllers on the wall. I have some NES zappers and a super scope wall mounted. So if the zombie apocalypse happens, kick the door open, point one of them at it, pow, pow. In my mind, I've blown the reds off. In reality, I've been eaten. But for gaming, for me, I unfortunately sit under the realm of this is shiny. I've just taken out its wrapper. Play it for 10 minutes and it'll go in cupboard. Three months later, I remember playing this. I'll put it back in. And then I don't remember where I was in this game. It's too confusing. I'll take it out and play the other game I was playing. 
I'm a very big fan of stop start gaming, um, which shouldn't be the case. Uh, but currently, I was trying to. I finished Final Fantasy Remake. Uh, really enjoyed that. Um, I was late to finishing it because obviously the rebirth was coming. I have rebirth. I haven't installed it. I have Crisis. Is Crisis Core the little mini one that was out for like, like twenty to forty hours of gameplay? It that I need to play before I play Rebirth. And I'm like, oh, but I need to make time for that. But Two K Twenty Four is now here. But also Hell Divers. But while we're on the subject of Hell Divers. There's another game that I bought that's under their side. I want to play that Robocop. That took some time in my life. I'll never get back. Um, don't stream Alien in Alien somewhere or other way. If you make noise, the baddies can see you because I found out that your viewers will just redeem really loud noises and then you get shot and die. So um, that was, that's was that been a learning curve. But yeah, so like I'm a huge Nintendo fan. Um, I was a big Nintendo boy uh, growing up. So I have a huge... Love for anything Nintendo do, um, to the point where there's Pokemon all over this room. Uh, my chain is a Charizard chain. Not a po Logan Paul style. Mine's better. Mine's a, a cast of a Burger King card from 1995. Not a card slapped in diamonds and plastic. Um, yeah, God of War was a fantastic event. I streamed God of War Ragnarok, Ragnarok DLC uh, and the lovely moment where Kratos looks at himself young on screen and nobody redeemed anything stupid, so it was quite a nice moment for me to just sit and watch that because I'd grown up with the franchise and saw him as a ragey beast into an old man with a beard and just aging and just being a dad. So that was like that was a very touchy moment to share with people that are spending their time watching you play games at the same time. So it was like it is like a nice little safe space because the people that are watching you have interesting games at the same time. Unless they watch me fail, and I played Fortnite last night because I thought, why not? And I got shot several times to be greeted by lots of fart noises and fail noises and people redeeming clips, abusing me in a, in a, in a nice, polite manner. I was like, I, I, the my my cadets, as I occasionally refer to them, to um, a brilliant. So my personal time doing a, a stream, um, just twice a week, nothing massive. But those few hours, uh, I find out how their weeks are. Um, and then we have a giggle with them. They can throw stuff at me. So it's nice. It's like you can see me at a show, but you only see me between my music. Or if you see me after the show and I'm putting the ring away. Whereas in here, you can talk to me uh, and we can chat and have a laugh. And there's different stuff. Unless you redeem 90 second music videos and get me D DMCA'd. And then I have to send the <laughs> lawyer out of your house to rearrange your windows. It's. Um, yeah, it's good. So games wise, I can't put a finger on the exact on the pulse of it, but there is so many. Oh, like like because obviously Tekken Eight comes out, but then you get beaten up a few times. You no longer want to play Tekken Eight. Um, Street Fighter, do you remember that? That came out Street Fighter Six. I can't remember where mm. I put that. So it's it's odd. Like you can't see on camera, but this there's a cabinet here, and it's it's got all the consoles in it. So if I want to go retro, where in my eyes it's PS Two, still brand new that. <laughs> Uh, can play stuff like that, and uh, obviously the Switch. Me and my daughter enjoy playing Mario Kart. I take great pleasure in thrashing her because I believe that if you if you if you can't win and you're a sore loser, you need to adjust your life. <laughs> your, your mental state needs correcting. <laughs> to which she then goes and tells her mum, and then I get stared at, and I have to apologise, and then put on automatic lane discipline and auto accelerate, and I'm like, "Come on, you're twelve. Surely you can hold the bone." <laughs> that was brilliant. So, what was the question you? I will burn ask you. Um, this oh, <sighs> Come on, cut. <sighs> right. So, oh, it should still be in my files. This was within regard to cooking, and it was on my podcast. I, I'm not gonna spam load of advertisements for it, but on my podcast, I did short little silly things and I asked for some questions, and I got one in, and he asked me about the recipe for how to make a good quality Yorkshire pudding. And let me tell you that I invested time and effort in recording me making the greatest Yorkshire pudding known to man. So um, it will go out um, as well as the quiz game that I also did. I just mustache things to do, things get sad. How to describe me? I'm like a magpie. If something shines, I'm going to go investigate and then I'll forget about the other shiny thing because another shiny thing will start and then the, the process repeats. 
which is probably equal to some of my matches where I look at somebody in the eyes and go, he's seen something shiny and he's now forgot what he's going to do. That's the reality of me. <laughs> so, yes, it, I will I will inform you, Will Burn. I will burn. I'll, uh, I'll inform you of the, the perfect Yorkshire pudding, sir. I haven't forgot about you. I, I see your face on my Mac, uh, and I know when I see you in the in the file in the, in the file explorer, I'm like, he's going to love that. I just need to push publish and job done. Oh <laughs> uh, dear, uh, Jim, back to you. You've talked about having sort of different personas, like you've got Winkman Nash, you've got Miles's dad. Is it ever difficult to sort of balance that out and think, right, I'm I'm wrestling for this promotion, so I've got to be in this mode? Yeah. Uh, Post-COVID, <laughs> I completely forgot how to be Miles' dad uh, for Rise. Um, and that, that had a knock-on effect for me versus Gene Money because I hadn't been to the gym because gyms weren't open. Uh, it's all the excuses in the world. It just wasn't – I didn't feel it. Uh, at all there was a wonderful video from liam slater who did like a behind the scenes vlog and there was just me in the corner uh just before my match and you could see that i was literally trying to inhale air and breathe out good luck from my butthole so that was nice um but there was one <sighs> there was a comfort in hull um i had to be i well i was a i was i worked for the rspca now the story was Rory Coyle wanted to fight with a fight a fight a bear, and the, and he couldn't fight the bear because the bear's friend wanted to fight him instead, and I was called in as the RSPCA. My name was Richard Splash, so you can see where this is going already. And Richard Splash was South African. I decided to be South African. I had the South African accent down for about seven seconds. Four of those were leaving the doors to enter the crowd. The accent went up and down, left, right. Almost had it. Went slightly Australian. I looked Rory dead in the eye and then went full Irish and then got DDT'd faster than I've ever been DDT'd in my life. <laughs> so losing it can happen. Um, yeah, I went from being having dick splash chanted to me to being drilled into the floor and taking a DDT with just my neck alone. Um, the video is out there somewhere. Um, in fact, I believe it's on my Mac computer because I got home and my wife was like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I think I am. I'll just show you this. And she was like, you're quite sorry. I, I, I flared up. It was my own thing because just nerves. Uh, Wrestleverse, I believe it was. And everything was in a different dimension. So that's why I was Richard Splash from the Iris. Richard Splash, the protector and care of animals. There we are. And uh, yeah, my accent just went it's like some Google Translate and didn't quite know which which line subject to put. And oh god, yeah, like I laughed at the same time was telling Rory I had no idea what's going on with my accent, and then DDT'd. So maybe 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 I might yell at him again on Saturday and then blame the Wrestleverse for that happening. Who knows? Anything anything would be possible. Is it Wrestle? I'm sure it was Wrestleverse. Good laugh, good times. Also terrifying. <laughs> so one final question for me. You obviously got time for a couple more. What's the goals, obviously, for you now? Obviously, for the rest of the year, what would you like to achieve in wrestling? Obviously, apart from the winning True Grit, we know that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, improve me uh, physically. Um, be far more improved than I've ever been. Just to because the older I'm getting, the harder things are to maintain and do. So a, a, a more fitter and just feel like I belong to be in a ring, not just as a character, but be able to wrestle uh, with more flair, if that makes sense. So physical for me, um, just being in far better shape. And I would love, love to do an 8x10 where I've got no T-shirt on and I just look like somebody wants to slide in my DMs and tell me how attractive I look. Uh, fun fact, I have a message from a chap, I won't mention his name, but it's really, really old, and he says he finds me outrageously sexy, and I've never deleted it because if I'm ever feeling down, I'll just look at that and go, it's been six years, but I wonder if he still feels this way. Um, so, yeah, physical, to look like a physical specimen. <laughs> uh, other girls, um, I'm more than happy to work on uh, work at other companies um, and be Wing Commander on there. My, Miles' dad's like official rise, rise his own product Nashboat is property of true grit i believe so don't think you've seen us 
as a tag team under Nashville elsewhere. But um, yeah, I suppose it doesn't hurt to be on other shows to get more eyes on you. Um, yeah, I just more of the same from me. Uh, bring stupidity, have fun, make a make some make a child's dad laugh and go, "Hey, mate, I don't like wrestling, but I proper love you. Let me buy you a pint," and I'll quietly decline. Um, it's just yes, more of the same from me. I, I do, <clears throat> Limited dates from my good self, but just enjoy them as they are. And just, yeah, just have have more fun in wrestling and just enjoy what it is. Like, at some point, I won't be able to do this. And uh, as soon as my knees go, what you're doing, that'll be the point. And then I'll be streaming six days a week. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, we've got time for one final question, mate. Yeah, well, if it's final question, then can, can we take it right back to the start? So you're talking there about, you know, when the knees have gone, right, that's when me, it ends. Get me counselling position. Right. right, go for it. But, like, when you do those aptitude tests at school and they tell you what career you're going to have, I don't think professional wrestler ever tends to come up on them. So how does that happen how when, when does that idea come into your head that i'm going to be a professional wrestler okay um fun fact when i took that test at school it said i was either going to be a stunt man or a bin man so there's half of it um i was like cool stunt man i was like oh bin man um the honest part of it um when my daughter was born my wife said to me she went is do you want to take up a hobby rather than just working and then coming home and newborn and stuff like that? I was like, are you sure? She was like, yeah, yeah, go for it. And obviously I made a point of watching Raw and SmackDown way before NXT arrived. Um, and I was, she knew I was interested in it. We'd have WrestleMania parties at the house and stuff. And yeah, as my daughter was born, she went, do you want to try it? And then that's when I decided, I think I'd been, I bounced around the country quite a bit with uh, growing up. Um, and living in different locations and I, did, I wasn't really interested in anything else it was either about work or just being selfish and drinking to all hours and everything else just being the opposite side of where I wanted to be in, in reality at all so when she says you want to take a hobby of some kind or go do something and just like do a class it then I dialed it up and it went a bit intense because I started at one wrestling school and enjoyed it. And then before you know, doing it three times a week there, then I was going to another couple of schools uh, and then it all fell in and things were starting to feel nice as a, as a new person in British wrestling. And I'll never forget coming home and all the lights being off. And I just traveled back from Preston uh, from PCW school and uh, walked into the lounge, turned the light on and my wife was sat in a chair and I was like, Oh my God. And she was like, we need to talk because you're you're literally away all weekend and you're training most times and the hobby had basically escalated and gone over. So I'd gone from doing nothing to then diving in really deep, but then not having much to show from all the time away and travel and stuff. So it got dialed back and then that's where we found the happy medium that when I get a book in, it goes into um, the calendar, obviously. And then the calendar is then we look at it and go, no, because we're here doing this. Yes, no, and we like we all agree. So the, the 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 house calendar knows where we all are at the same time. So that's why I, not not in a cocky way because I can't be that way. But I, it, the pick and choose begins because I can't promise too far ahead because schools like to have six weeks off and then more weeks and additional weeks and times that we cover for that. So it's we try to find a happy balance of it all to make it all sit and and, and relax. But yeah, it all literally started. Uh, Go go find something for yourself to do that's not been that's not working all the time. Being a parent and uh, placing leads in a in a cage fighting school and the rest is history. It's all 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 erased and only remember anything occasionally when you bump your head and forget. <laughs> This is brilliant. This has been a really really fun chat. One final thing from you, Wing. Is there anything you'd like to plug, my friend, before we head off? Uh, yeah, there was a spider on my floor then for a minute. No, oh, no, it's not. It's probably just uh, my eyes. Um, mustache things to do apparently is a website, but it's just Wing Commander Nash. If you, whatever you search me on, you'll find me. It'll either be great or it'll be rubbish. Um, I just yeah, the, there's not many Wing Commander Nashes. It's either me or you'll get actual Kevin Nash. I don't know how we get that correlation because we're not the same person. I've still got two very good working quotes. Um, but yeah, honestly, thank you for having me on the show. I've enjoyed myself. Sorry for tangenting off. I'm a bit of a naughty one like that. But no, it's been great. Just, yeah, I, I have a sign behind me because I'm selfish. Look, there it is. I'm available on Wednesdays and Sundays on Twitch. Um, yeah, no, it's just been nice to talk to new faces. I say that. I'm looking at camera there, but you guys are up there. 
but it looks weird. And then I've got a light here. But, <laughs> no, um, Jimmy, I'm, I'm glad that somebody sold you to me, sir. And I'm glad you've had the chance to chat with me and ask me questions and not peel back the curtain too much because wrestling's proper real. Real as oh. you've ever seen. You don't look too sure. I think <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, of course, the magic of wrestling is back this Saturday as we're taking a little deep dive into the backstage thing in AEW. It's got a lot Ooh. to discuss with that. So Ooh. that's obviously uh, it's this Saturday, 6.30 p.m., 1.30 Eastern. Wing, thank you so much for obviously taking the time to talk to us. Jim, no, thanks, hope, you've, hope you've had a blast. Yes, yeah, yeah, been brilliant. Cheers, guys. Cheers.